Hi everyone, my name is Nihat, software engineer at Urban Games. It's my great pleasure to give you some insights into the newest game update for Transport Fever 2, which we call the Summer Update. Well, we received a huge amount of feedback over the last 1-2 to two years and with this update we really wanted to realize as much as possible. We sorted all wishes by popularity and the result is a huge list of improvements. It's not only about usability and bug fixes, we also found time to improve the game's performance and modding support. First of all, we did some very basic stuff. For example, we added Borderless as a new window mode, since so many content creators asked us for this option. Also, we streamlined the load game window and you can now load games and change the mod settings directly from in-game without going back to the main menu. But now we come to more interesting changes. We have prepared a little use case to show you some of the main improvements. Welcome to Somerville. Let us develop this lovely city. In the town window, we added a new supplier tab where you can now see which industries can deliver the necessary cargo. This factory is ready to supply Somerville with food. Let's start by building a station next to the factory. As you can see, we simplified the main construction menu. You will find things more easily now and you will need less mouse clicks. And we added a scroll bar as well. This is really useful, especially when you use mods. Let me quickly add some tracks, connect them to the existing network. Looks great. Before the update, quite some players complained that sometimes catenary poles were placed on the tracks. Another small improvement. The industry and town labels on the heads-up display now stay visible while editing lines. Now we need to buy a suitable vehicle. For this purpose, we have revised the vehicle store. Vehicle can now be filtered much better. We'll go for wagon, cargo and set the filter to food. Also, you can now sort vehicles to your likings. Because we have big plants, we sort the wagons by capacity. This button here sets the ascending and descending order. This boxcar is perfect. I can now double click to buy the wagons. For the locomotive, we need a good tractive effort, so just sort it accordingly. This Euro Dual is a good compromise, and if you buy a second one, it will appear at the end of the train composition. Before this update, you had to click your way to the front. Now you can just press Shift and click to achieve that in a breeze. Okay, great! Our train is now ready for duty and just needs to be assigned to our new line. Let's do this! Oh, now I know that I forgot to rename my line. With this update, we no longer have to switch to the line manager to do that. And that's great because we save some needless mouse clicks. Done. Keeping things organized is key for success. Here's another nice addition. You can now set a minimum and maximum waiting time for each stop of your line. This is a great gameplay feature that was truly missing and which will help you run your vehicles a lot more efficiently. And of course this works with any kind of transportation. There is a lot more in the update and I'd like to show you two additional usability improvements. The bridge, tunnel and railroad crossing build menus are now easier to use because we unify their style. Also, we improved some tools like one for traffic lights or player ownership and note that these tools are now placed in the main construction menu for easier access. And there are numerous other enhancements and visual improvements. The tram lights are now blinking when they turn, all vehicle types support particle effects and the drivers finally learn to wait for the barriers to open. There is a lot more in the update, to see all changes have a look at the full release notes. Thanks a lot for your attention. We at Urban Games are very happy about the huge interest in Transport Fever 2 and we are sure that we improve the game also in the future. Have fun and hear you soon.